Long before the first Europeans came to the Americas, indigenous peoples flourished for many thousands of years on the continent, all with complex lives and vibrant cultures. But colonial settlers stripped indigenous communities of land, family, sovereignty, and more. Yet indigenous peoples persisted. In this video, we'll address and counter various misconceptions relating to the history of indigenous peoples, debunking the biased perspective that American history only began with the arrival of European settlers and that interaction with English and other colonists led to the destruction of the cultures of indigenous peoples. In fact, despite the multiple losses, it did not. Archaeological evidence proves that indigenous peoples have been present in North America for at least 21,000 years. While some archaeologists think that hunter-gatherers traveled here in the final few millennia of the Ice Age, from Siberia to Alaska via the Bering Land Bridge, there are other theories about how the continent was populated, including the coastal migration theory. But what archaeologists know for certain is how they lived. For survival, indigenous peoples relied on a varied range of food strategies, from hunting large game like mammoths and mastodons and bison, to gathering wild plants. Later, groups would domesticate plants in small-scale horticulture, and in some instances, large-scale agricultural systems. Some hunter-gatherer groups also developed complex environmental management strategies. With these processes came some new innovations, Across the continents, they used stone and wood for tools, made pottery and created containers. In the southwestern desert, they developed techniques to irrigate the land. And in other places, they designed and constructed monuments like the earthen mounds of Cahokia. In some societies, chiefdoms and class systems were formed to organize labor and systems of leadership. And in others, small, mobile, egalitarian groups persisted. While not all indigenous communities adopted agriculture, used pottery, or developed rank societies, all of them did develop complex and vibrant cultures based on family lineage, language, traditions, and adaptability to their environments. Gender relations differed from community to community, some societies being matriarchal and some patriarchal, with varied and complex gender roles. Belief systems were also highly diverse, as were their ritual rites and burial ceremonies. There were thought to be at least 300 to 500 different spoken languages at the time of European arrival, something remarkable in its scope. Despite the popular misconception, most indigenous peoples did not live in teepees. Indigenous housing also included multiple-story masonry buildings, subterranean pit houses, wigwams, igloos, wooden-framed houses on earthen mounds, and plank houses with totem poles. To many students, interactions between Europeans and indigenous peoples are exemplified by the Thanksgiving story. But this story propagates the myth that colonization was a gentle, reciprocal process shaped by the benevolent religious beliefs of settlers. This is not exactly true. What is true is that when European colonizers first encountered indigenous peoples in places like Jamestown and Plymouth, both sides attempted diplomacy, aided by the efforts of translators like Squanto. To some degree, settlers did learn from and trade with indigenous peoples. Such adjustments happened on both sides. They also built alliances to aid in the fight for land, resources, and power. But the Europeans, who were mostly devoutly Christian, viewed indigenous peoples as pagan, a view that quickly morphed into racialized othering. The European colonization of North America was not an example of cultures in contact. In fact, over time, the colonists attempted the systematic destruction of indigenous cultures through religious conversion, forced cultural assimilation, and mass displacement of communities in the attempt to extract resources and manage land. In many instances, colonizers coerced 
and even enslaved indigenous peoples as workers. It is true that the spread of European diseases also had a devastating impact on indigenous communities. Tens of millions died from disease. In fact, some communities and cultural traditions were wiped out completely. Yet indigenous peoples did not assimilate or disappear en masse. Many actively fought against colonial oppression. For example, the Pueblo Revolt of 1680, the largest uprising of indigenous peoples in history, drove Spanish settlers out of the Southwest for around 12 years. Later, in the attempt to seize indigenous lands during the Indian Wars and under the guise of Manifest Destiny, the U.S. faced stiff resistance from indigenous peoples all along the western frontier. To escape persecution, many indigenous peoples adopted some colonial clothing, tools, languages, and foods while maintaining their identities, practices, and communities. Some communities banded together forming new nations from diverse indigenous heritages. While our understanding of American history has been distorted by colonialism, work is being done to correct these inaccuracies. And although many indigenous peoples did not keep written records, they did keep stories and culture alive through oral history, tradition, and material culture. Research led largely by indigenous historians archaeologists, archivists, and ethnographers is addressing long-standing misconceptions, helping to better understand the political, economic, and cultural context of indigenous peoples today, who have persisted through more than five centuries of colonialism. 